my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this week's edition of the St. Jude Parish Chatter. And I'm here again with our good friend Deacon Joe. Hi, Deacon Joe. Howdy. We are ready for Thanksgiving. Are you ready for Thanksgiving? I'm getting close. Good for you. What are your Thanksgiving dishes? What do you love for Thanksgiving? Oh, goodness, goodness. Well, I, I think my favorite Thanksgiving dish was my uh, uh, mother-in-law's uh, dressing and gravy. I mean, God rest her soul, she's gone, but I can still, every Thanksgiving, I can still almost taste it. It was almost like a dessert. <laughs> wow. It, was it's, good it stuff. sounds delicious. Yeah, it was good stuff. For me, it's mom's apple pie, and mom would even make the crust from scratch. She would get out the rolling pin wow. and roll the, the crust out there. And yeah, the apple pies were, of course, uh, delicious, well-sweetened, and that's why I liked it. And would you believe it or not, I'm going to get that apple pie this year for Thanksgiving. So Wonderful. on Thursday, I will be with my mom in Arizona having Thanksgiving dinner, and there are a couple of friends and guests that will be with us. But she's already committed herself to making apple pie Wonderful. for Thanksgiving, and I am so looking forward to that. The the things that people make bring back all kinds of memories. So this apple pie brings back memories. But more than that, just Thanksgiving itself, there's... Uh, my mom would always have cream peas, and it was served in the fine china, but at some point in their married life, the china got chipped. That dish that served the cream peas had a chip in it. And so as you'd hand it around, you'd always say to the person, be careful, don't spill, because the cream could go over the side, because it's all filled up. So you have to remind everybody as it's going around. And what a great memory of, mm -hmm. of just being a family, where, yeah, things aren't perfect, but here's the cream peas, and you got to watch out for the little chip, because it'll spill over the sides of the chip if you're not careful with it. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys have the uh, uh, smaller table for the kids off to the side? <laughs> I was always at the big table, so oh, I'm the youngest nice. of, of four, and so we always had space for everybody at the table. Okay. And so, yeah, I think my older brothers were the big kids already, and so I was just invited to be in with everybody at Thanksgiving dinner. So, yeah, no kids table. Okay. Why was there a kids table when you were growing up? Uh, not so much until I got married, and, they were, and when, once we all started having kids, uh, it was kind of, you know, they were kind of regulated to the card table until uh, uh, there was room at the at the big table. So it, it, mm. it, it happened. So. Yeah, it can happen. But yeah. fortunately, I haven't been at the kids' table even as a child. And as an adult, I haven't been relegated there yet. <laughs> Give me a few years. All when right. I become a grumpy old man, then they'll say, that table's for you. You sit over there, Father. <laughs> Who's our sponsor this week, Deacon Joe? Well, we have a really great sponsor this week. It's the Christian Services Committee, and it's their Adopt-A-Family. And that adopt a family is to help uh, uh, with adopting a family for Christmas presents and for needs of, uh, for families in need. And that's going to begin on Thanksgiving Day, November twenty third, probably right after Mass. They'll have some uh, uh, families and uh, available for us to uh, adopt and be able to help them out. For yeah. the uh, the for families Christmas. themselves won't be there, but they're going to have names of right. families that can right. be adopted. They'll have names for us. This is all organized by the Christian Service Committee, so special gratitude to the members of that committee for they do great work. putting this together for us. Yeah, fantastic work, and they just make St. Jude Parish <clears throat> look so good. So thank you for being our sponsor, even though um, you paid nothing for the sponsorship, but we're happy <laughs> to recognize you as supporting us, and we support you. We want to hear the gospel and the word of God just sink deep into our hearts. So Deacon Joe, would you share Sunday's gospel with us? I will. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, a third, one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. 
his master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent under the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you have not have put my money in the bank so that I could have at least got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Deacon Joy, I think the word talent can be uh, can be our first stop in this in this uh, analysis of that gospel because in English it has a double meaning. It's a beautiful meaning because a talent means a monetary sum. So in the Greek, that's what it's referring to is, is money. And a, a talent is, was actually quite a bit of money. It's worth 100 pounds of silver. So they were getting a, a pretty good gift from the king to, to go and invest. So if you had five talents, you had 500 pounds of silver to be able to work with for all of that time. A pretty significant amount. Absolutely a significant amount. And in English, we have this beautiful wordplay where talents mean abilities, gifts, things that God has given that you can do in a special way. Those are talents. And so uh, the gospel works on both levels of uh, the, um, uh, the gifts and abilities that we have. We're supposed to be grateful for them and put those to use for the building of the kingdom. And then uh, any monetary gifts that we've been given as well, whatever Whatever, um, whatever monies we make are to be used for the upbuilding of the kingdom and to be invested to be able to grow and some wisdom has to be present there. At least a, a discussion about economics. Do you mm. want to be controversial, Deacon Joe? Should we talk about economic sure, systems? Sure, sure. I have a history of that. So. <laughs> yeah, well, why not be controversial? <laughs> but um, our Lord seems to be rewarding the one that was industrious and went about and invested the talents that were out there. So it makes us think of capitalism, but the church doesn't bless unbridled capitalism. So I brought the, the catechism with me. Can I share with you a little of the Please catechism? Please do. Please do. So in the catechism of the Catholic Church, um, uh, this is paragraph 2431. It says, The responsibility of the state, economic activity, especially the activity of a market economy, cannot be conducted in an institutional, juridical, or political vacuum. On the contrary, it presupposes sure guarantees of individual freedom and private property, as well as a stable currency and efficient public services. Hence, the principal task of the state is to guarantee the security so that those who work and produce can enjoy the fruits of their labor and thus feel encouraged to work efficiently and honestly. Another task of the state is that of overseeing and directing the exercise of human rights in economic sector. However, primary responsibility for this area belongs not to the state, but to individuals and to the various groups and associations which make up the society. End quote. So um, the, this responsibility, uh, the, the primary responsibility belonging not to the state, but to the individual is an indication of virtue. So when we go about making investments, we're supposed to be virtuous. We can't just go out. um, Our our goal is not to make money in an unbridled way, but to be virtuous as we make money. So um, human freedom has to be there. In fact, can I share with you another quote from the Catechism, Deacon Joe? Please. Have I exhausted everybody already? So a few paragraphs earlier, 24, 29. Everyone has the right of economic initiative. Everyone should make legitimate use of his talents to contribute to the abundance that will benefit all and to the harvest of just fruits of his labor, should seek to observe regulations issued by legitimate authority for the sake of the common good. So there's those talents again that we were referring to earlier. And so in this case, the talents are a reference to our ability to work. And it should contribute to the abundance that will benefit all. 
us. Right. I heard that word common good. Uh-huh. And that's something we hear uh, often in the uh, social teachings of the church, too. That's right. At, for the common good. You're a part of the Focolare movement, aren't you, Deacon Joe? Don't I am. they have a strong teachings on the common good? They do. They do. We believe in a, 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 in a part of that spirituality, the Focolare, is a, what they call communion of goods. And uh, it really encourages us to live simply, to try to be uh, detached from uh, uh, as, from... I don't know if wealth is the right word, but just uh, there's a certain detachment from things of the world, yeah. you know. And then uh, several of the different groups, like uh, some of the focal are or clergy, and the clergy group that I belong to, we have a uh, common fund that we all contribute into and uh, that we use in common for things like retreats or different things that we do to, together. And uh, mm-hmm. even in the uh, families and the, the uh, single single folks, and uh, couples who are focolari, also, uh, you know, things that are uh, in their in their abundance as they're able, they contribute to the common good too of, of other families and things. Yeah. So just to clarify, the the detachment doesn't mean that wealth is evil oh, or that no. money is evil. It means that the purpose of our lives is not to get more money or to right. Like that, it's right? just the, that living simply. Yeah, to live simply. Blessed be God for it. And in the midst of that living simply, virtue comes out because temperance is one of the cardinal virtues. I mean, it's not too much of anything. And so if we're doing too much of everything, we will end up, uh, we'll end up broke, actually, <laughs> uh, which has a beautiful way of teaching us we shouldn't have done that. But, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the simple living is what we're attracted to. Some people uh, equate Marxism with simple living, and it's a equation that is inaccurate. So I think I should just put that teaching out there that um, Marxism doesn't promote the individual freedoms that people would have. Instead, Marxism creates a universal system that's heavily regulated. So even having three shirts is immoral under the Marxist system. You only need the bare minimum. You can have the bare minimum of what you need. So one shirt to be washed and the other shirt you wear. But if you have a car and you just need to go two miles, well, you can walk two miles. It's immoral under the Marxist system to use your car to go for two two miles. And it destroys human freedom. So um, I, my experience while I was in Moscow and seeing the effects of, of their attempt at Marxism, it did such violence to human souls. They, they lost their care for God, which was immo- uh, illegal to have any respect for God. And then they lost their care for each other within their families and eventually uh, came down to a loss of care for themselves. There was a, a lack of self-esteem amongst the people in, in Moscow. So that was my experience with Marxism, and it's really left a, um, I left a taste in my mouth afterwards. I think my, my limited experience with it was probably after that. Uh, we were in the Czech Republic visiting relatives in the uh, uh, early 90s, and it was right after the, uh, I think they called it the Velvet Revolution, so it was really interesting to see the... Uh, the newfound freedom of people, and one of the things that they really were trying to get back in shape were their churches. Beautiful. They wanted the church to go first. Right. Yeah. You know, so many. Uh, that's been the nature of so many people throughout history. So they want the church to be big and beautiful, and they would make sacrifices for their churches, and they're happy living in shacks as long <laughs> as God's house is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think of this line from the gospel, Master? Um, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. And he gets the same reward as the guy who had five talents. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. The guy who had two talents gets the same reward as the guy who had five talents. I almost think it's it's uh, it's not how much he, he gave him back. It's the fact that he did. That he did the work. That's yeah. right. He received yeah. the gift from the king, and then he did some work with those gifts in order to build up the the kingdom. The kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, whether it's small gifts that we've received or great gifts that we received, everybody does their part. And then there's an equal uh, blessing that comes to those who've done their part. Amen. Yeah. Father, would you uh, extend uh, God's blessing for us today? Absolutely, as we get ready for Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.